Crohn's disease. Um, this is actually a, a different topic for us. So, uh, Crohn's disease is really not a heart condition, but we know that inflammation actually can affect the heart. Uh, we know that inflammation can affect the heart. Um, and there are so many different diseases out there. And uh, so one of the reasons we want to do this is bring awareness to uh, everybody about different disease processes. Um, and uh, also mention uh, from very special people in our group as well. So uh, Jerry, take it away. Perfect, thank you so much, Dr. Kernew. So welcome everyone to our webinar tonight. We'll be talking about Crohn's disease. Specifically, what we're gonna be doing is trying to raise awareness about the condition and also uh, to learn more about disease and how you can become an advocate for those living with Crohn's disease. So I just wanted to share this picture of everyone. So the person on the left here is Mary, and she was the inspiration for our webinar tonight. Um, she's part, she was part of our Motivation, Mindfulness, and Moving group, our Wednesday patient groups on Zoom. And she was a uh, regular who always joined and always brightened up the room when she joined. Um, and she unfortunately passed away recently. And one of her wishes for us was to talk about Crohn's disease, which was something that a condition she was living with for a very long time. And she wanted us to raise awareness and teach others how to advocate for those living with Crohn's disease. So that's why we're doing this webinar tonight to honor Mary and to continue on her legacy. And I'll pass it off to Dia to tell you guys why um, this picture means so much to us. Yeah, so this is one of our favorite pictures because on the next slide, it will show the joke that made us all laugh one day in our little group together and it says an apple a day really can keep the doctor away but only if you aim it really well and Mary absolutely loved this joke she would bring it up all the time and she and Dr. Kernu had a really special bond so her impact and her humor really left a mark on us and we want to share it all with you today I'll pass it off to Hannah if she wants to say a couple words Sure, yeah, and just to add on to what Jerry and Dia said, Mary was a really special presence in our mindfulness, motivation, and moving group sessions. Um, she advocated a lot for us to, you know, help Dr. Kernew to just manage his stress, and I think she taught a lot. Put a picture back on. Put that picture, sure. Mary. I, wanna, I, wanna, I love that picture, Mary. So just before you say something, Hannah, what, what happened was that Mary and I had a special relationship for about 20 years or so. Um, and uh, she, one day she brought in a, a, a bag of apples and uh, she wanted to uh, have good aim. And uh, so, uh, uh, so Mary, may, may you rest in peace and uh, may you hit me with that apple many, many times over and over again. And I always say an apple a day keeps the doctor away for other reasons, but uh, go ahead, Hannah, go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah, I was just going to add on. She was just a really special person to all of us in the group. Um, she meant, I think, for, especially for me, because she was always talking about how mindfulness and meditation was so important to her. I hope that other people also, whoever was touched by her and her presence in their life, um, really gets to share. We get to share that today. So Dr. Kearney, go ahead. So um, this is actually a couple things. Uh, in the back, there's a there's a painting in the waiting room. First of all, our waiting room is empty at this stage, so that's when used with the, the pandemic. This uh, this this distancing, um, 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 is, and this picture in the background is one of our patients was kind enough to uh, to, to paint a, a pathway to health. Um, on your right is a book called Grit, and um, Mary had a lot of grit and, and grit is the ability to basically make lemon aid out of lemon. And no matter what happens is to adapt and, and, and make positive changes um, and to and be per, and per, and just perceive to just to move forwards. And it's a book I encourage everybody to read at, at some point in time. And also what you also see was her, one of her favorite mugs. Um, she gave me that mug um, and uh, it's a mug I cherish. Um, so Mary was one of those individuals that we're gonna talk about who had Crohn's disease. In fact, she reminded me was that uh, she had these pains that no one could diagnose and things of that nature. And uh, she said, I made the diagnosis or led to the diagnosis of Crohn's disease over 20 years ago. Um, and we'll talk about what Crohn's disease is and um, what it means. and. Uh, but she also had a lot of suffering, a lot of pain. And, 
and she lost a lot of weight and she would go for IV hydration. And, and she just thought that um, she was in too much pain. It wasn't, it could not get better. She's had multiple procedures, surgeries for this that weren't, weren't going to improve. And there's something called MAID where people uh, are now allowed in Canada to end their life if they have intolerable suffering. And uh, she went through that process and it was a long process. And in one sense, it feels like a court of law because people want to make sure that this is truly uh, the right choice for you. Uh, there's, there's lots of, uh, uh, has to be, has to have two independent medical assessments, but you have to, I had to write uh, like a 20 page letter, it seemed like, um, uh, about her medical conditions and why this was the right choice for us. So they had good documentation, but more importantly is that Mary wanted this um, and uh, she ended her life on her terms. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, to be there at that time. And uh, thank you, Mary, for allowing me to be there. Sorry, I got a little tearful. <laughs> and uh, she was a big part of our group. And um, and I also want to thank the, the mindfulness group as well. And you're all invited to attend. This is called Mindfulness uh, Movement and Meditation. It's something that takes place on Thursdays at seven o'clock. And it's uh, and uh, you can see the, the group here, uh, that are some of the presenters are they're wonderful people. These young people have taught me so much how to live in the moment um, and to make the world slow down at times. And uh, if something bad happens to you at this point in time, you can bounce back and it doesn't, it doesn't define who you are as a person. There's always abilities to, to improve and move forward. So one book's called Grit. I, I, my recommendation is look at the, the, the videos that these young people have, have performed. You've done a great job. And these are young superstars that are going to have changed the world already and have a lot more changes to go. So uh, in memory of Mary, let's hear about Crohn's disease. Thank you so much, Dr. Kernu. Um, and we'll just go over the table of contents for tonight and what we're gonna be talking about. Um, so the first, we're gonna talk about what is Crohn's, to talk about symptoms, diagnosis, and also management of the disease. We'll go into research into Crohn's, some promising research and potential treatments that are in the pipeline as well. We'll uh, teach you how to advocate for yourself or for family members of Crohn's um, if, uh, if you are living with Crohn's disease. I will talk about how you can advocate yourself uh, to a medical professional and also what resources are available. And next, we'll talk about resources in Canada you can use for support, um, online resources and other resources as well. We'll go a little bit into IBD versus IBS. So Crohn's falls under IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease. And we'll talk a little bit about how that's different from IBS, where some of you might be more familiar with, which is irritable uh, bowel syndrome. And we'll talk about what the differences are and why they are considered or classified as different um, diseases and conditions. And lastly, we'll talk how to become an advocate. So if you don't uh, are not living with Crohn's, how can you become an advocate to help those living with Crohn's and spread awareness about this disease? So now let's talk a little bit about what Crohn's disease actually is. So Crohn's disease uh, it falls under the family of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. And what the disease is, is that it causes inflammation of the digestive tract and can affect the entire bowel wall or just a section of the bowel wall. So any region of the GI tract can be affected from your mouth all the way down to your anus. Um, but it commonly affects the small intestine and the start of the large intestine. And as you can see on the picture to the right, uh, with a picture from the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, um, Crohn's disease can uh, skip regions. So it can leave areas of healthy tissue um, and areas of damaged tissue. And also depend on location can affect things uh, like your presentation of disease and also your symptoms. And what causes Crohn's disease is currently unknown. So there are some proposed factors that scientists uh, kind of look to, but they don't have a full picture of exactly what causes this, is, this disease. But some of the proposed factors that they have is that uh, it's an autoimmune reaction. So scientists think that maybe a virus or some sort of bacteria in the intestine activated the immune system to attack healthy digestive tract cells. So that is an abnormal immune system response because normally your immune system will attack foreign cells in your body. 
Um, and this abnormal uh, immune response will lead to inflammation and damage to your digestive tract. Um, some other factors include genetics. So uh, studies show that if uh, there's a family history of Crohn's disease, uh, it can increase the risk of yourself developing Crohn's, um, but also other environmental factors like climate, where you live, um, diet, and also smoking may play a role um, in a person developing this disease. So we kind of talked about what it is. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the symptoms that a person living with Crohn's might experience. So symptoms will ultimately differ from person to person and can affect uh, two people very differently. And that's because Crohn's disease have many different types. Um, it can affect many different areas of their digestive tract and two people likely won't have the same area of damage. Um, but there are some common symptoms that these uh, patients will likely face. Um, some of them are loss of appetite and also weight loss, um, persistent diarrhea and potentially bloody stools, uh, cramps and abdominal pains. Um, they could have persistent fevers as well as fatigue and also the need for bowel movements and going to the washroom and some complications that can cause, um, that can come from Crohn's disease involve bowel obstructions due to damage and scarring of the, of the digestive tract tissue um, ulcers or sores, fistulas, and in many cases, malnutrition due to the damage in the, in the digestive tract. Um, some of these patients might not be able to absorb all the nutrition from the foods that they eat. So now we learn about the symptoms, um, but what if you have, uh, if you suspect you have Crohn's disease or if you are living with Crohn's disease, what can you expect from a physician? So when you go see your doctor, um, to, to get diagnosed for Crohn's disease, what they would do is to do kind of a run a battery of tests. So they want to roll out other diagnosis first. Um, so they'll do things like stool analyses, x-rays, and blood tests um, to rule out other conditions that might be causing your symptoms. And as well on the next slide, some of the testing that they'll do are endoscopies and colonoscopies. So endoscopies is inserting a tube down uh, your mouth and your throat to examine your esophagus and your stomach. And then a colonoscopy goes in on the other side to examine your large intestines uh, and your anus as well. Uh, they could also do biopsies, removing tissue from the intestine for further testing. They could do a chromo and endoscopy, which is uh, they could spray a blue liquid into your colon to detect changes in your intestinal lining. And finally, some small intestine imaging, which is a little bit more sensitive. Uh, where the patient will ingest oral contracts, uh, contrast, and they will do imaging such as MRIs, CTs, and fluoroscopic x-rays. So treatment varies depending on how severe your symptoms are, with the goal being to induce and maintain remission over time. So we can use various medication to manage the disease. Starting off, we have antibiotics, and these are really helpful to treat infections, and in particular, they prevent serious infections from forming, such as abscesses. And then we have our anti-diarrheal medication. And as Jerry mentioned earlier, diarrhea is a very common symptom of Crohn's. So targeting this would be really helpful. And a common medication for this is Imodium. And then the next two medications are corticosteroids and your biologics. So both of these medications are used for anti-inflammatory purposes. Um, corticosteroids are used for short term and aren't really used that frequently unless other treatment methods aren't sufficient. And biologics are uh, a more natural form of medication and they'll be discussed uh, in more detail later in this presentation. Treatment, sorry. Uh, in addition to medications, there are general lifestyle changes that you can make as well to significantly reduce your symptoms. Uh, for starters, you could simply change up your diet to improve your gut health. This includes limiting your dairy intake or limiting the foods you may be sensitive to, taking multivitamins with the approval of your family doctor, eating in smaller portions, so four to five meals a day instead of your regular two to three meals, and increasing your fluid intake. Now, this doesn't mean increase your sugary drinks, but increase the healthier ones like water. And then also keeping a food diary would really help as well. So this pretty much means 
you eat a meal, you write down how you feel 15 to 30 minutes later. And then next time you see your doctor, you go through it and maybe find out what's causing your flare ups and eventually eliminate those from your diet temporarily to see if that helps. And then we could limit smoking as it does tend to aggravate symptoms. And finally, we can minimize stress by participating in more, more of an active lifestyle. This could include exercising anywhere from walking to just things that will get your heart rate up or regular relaxation and breathing exercises from yoga or guided medication, from yoga to guided meditation. And in addition, exercise does provide stress relief, but it also induces healthy bowel movements as well, which is a major thing we want to target in Crohn's. Um, so I'll be talking about some newly researched treatments. So of the newly researched treatments for Crohn's disease, stem cell therapy has achieved significant results in reducing inflammation and improving patients' quality of life. So a stem cell is a cell that can differentiate into any type of cell, and there is currently two forms of stem cells being studied. So a hematopoietic stem cell is a cell that can differentiate into a variety of blood cells, which may assist in quote-unquote resetting the immune system, thereby absolving it from abnormal infl inflammatory immune responses as well. However, there are great associated risks currently as, uh, with um, hematopoietic stem cell therapy, and it is not deemed as an acceptable alternative to conventional treatment options. A mesenchymal stem cell um, is a stem cell that possesses an immunosuppressive effect, which can help modulate abnormal immune responses. And the cell does this by influencing tissue repair via cell signaling or direct cell-to-cell -cell contact. So a randomized double-blind study by Barnhoon et al. found that bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cell treatment showed significant reduction in disease activity and maintenance of that result for four, um, at the four-year follow-up. Another study by Shimizu et al. investigating mesenchymal stem cells and inflammatory bowel disease, 40% of patients improved in symptoms just after 42 days, and 53% showed clinical remission. So though there is continuing research on the efficacy and long-term effects of mesenchymal stem cell therapy, numerous studies, including the two mentioned, has shown promising results affirming that allogenic Mesenchymal stem cell therapy, which is just another way of saying stem cells derived from another person, um, as a safe and feasible form of treatment for Crohn's disease. Um, so due to the nature of the disease, um, there is currently no known cure for Crohn's disease, and the standard treatment consists of a plethora of medication that can only suppress the symptoms. So we will look at a case study just to see how stem cell therapy completely changed a person's life. So this was a case of a 25-year-old Caucasian American woman diagnosed with Crohn's disease. She had a history of other health problems such as anemia and thyroid issues, and as her Crohn's disease condition considerably worsened, she was put on more medication. And so because of this, she experienced harsh side effects and could not function in day-to-day -day tasks. Um, she had to stop school, and this put her life in a stall. So she was treated with umbilical cord derived mesenchymal stem cell implementation, which consists of implementing around 300 million human stem cells into her body. Um, and within three months, she's a complete reversal of her abdominal pain and had significant improvement in energy. Her bowel movements decreased from 12 to 15 to once per day, and she could stop all her steroid medication. She showed at no abnormal signs during her colonoscopy and endoscopy examinations, and she had no adverse reactions. So you can just see how stem cell therapy completely changed her life around and, her, and how her quality of life improved significantly. So this goes to show the power of stem cell therapy and that there's new exciting research improving people's lives daily. Perfect, so now we'll talk a little bit about biologics. So we talked, so Risha talked a little bit about this in, uh, before, but now we'll talk a little bit more about what they are. So biologics are medications that target proteins involved in the immune response, specifically targeting the pathways leading to inflammation. And some of the biologics currently approved in Canada um, are those you see there, uh, adalimumab and the rest, I'm not gonna name them because uh, they're kind of hard to, hard to say, um, but they're not that many biologics currently out in Canada. And many of these can be very expensive as well. So these biologics are mostly used in moderate to severe cases uh, when conventional therapies have failed. So conventional therapy usually involves some sort of anti-inflammatory 
uh, like corticosteroids or 5-ASA, and some immune suppressants, like a common example is azathioprine, and use of antibiotics if infections occur. Um, but there are some new biologics in the pipeline. Um, so this is from a study by Mead et al. looking at the uh, new and potential treatments for uh, and biologics for Crohn's disease. So there are many in the pipeline and these biologics uh, can are showing promising results and they have similar or even better safety profiles. So there are, is some hope at the end of the tunnel um, and there are some promising new drugs in the pipeline for Crohn's disease. Okay, so now we're gonna be speaking about um, how to advocate for yourself or a family member if you or someone who you know has Crohn's disease. So we're gonna start with what does the word advocacy even mean? So the literal definition is the act of pleading for supporting or recommending a particular cause or policy. And self-advocacy is the action of representing oneself or one's views or interests. Now, um, advocacy can also be thought of, I guess in simpler terms, the act of speaking on the behalf of or in support of another person, place or thing. Now, in terms of actually taking steps to put this in action, um, there are four things to keep in mind is to do your homework, researching things, um, always staying up to date on all of these studies. It can be hard at some times, but um, that kind of leads into actually the third point is keeping notes on stuff. Um, things are always popping up, different uh, research um, strategies or different drugs are always up and coming. So keep that in mind. Um, finding the right healthcare partner, someone who will listen to you, who will understand your opinion, where you're coming from, that is very important and speaking up, asking questions, challenging questions, getting a second opinion if you need it, and challenge your care team because ultimately everyone wants the best for the patient, whether that's you or a loved one. So we can go to the next slide where we're gonna be talking um, about biosimilars. Now, Jerry mentioned what um, biologics are, but we're gonna be talking about what biosimilars are and how do these drugs impact patients. Now, biosimilars are drugs or medications that are similar but not identical to the biologics. So some things to keep in mind is um, accessibility and other factors. So provincial governments are considering switching people on certain biologics to biosimilars for non-medical reasons, for example, cutting costs and to save money. Now, while biosimilars are an effective and safe treatment, um, switching to a biosimilar for non-medical reasons is usually not in the best interest of the patient. And this is an opinion um, that is cited by the Crohn's and Colitis Canada um, organization as well. So that's why it's very important to do your research, ask the challenging questions and really advocating for what you believe in what your opinion is. One of the things to, to realize is that uh, if you go back one, um, one slide is that uh, getting medications right, getting proper research is, is really a challenge and uh, biologics, are really very expensive. And uh, so we have criteria for, for generic drugs and now we have some for biosimilars. So uh, this is something that I think we all welcome because we wanna treat as many people as we possibly can and be cost effective. So I'm not particularly worried about biosimilars versus uh, a brand name drug. I think is that uh, if one does one's homework is that getting good therapy at a lesser cost is very, very important. As you know, we're all stressed for, for costs right now. Um, and so doing things well. So this is actually, thank you for bringing that up. So don't be afraid of uh, explore and don't be afraid if you can't afford something, make sure that your team, your doctors uh, and pharmacists know about this because there are sometimes alternatives and different ways of getting things funded and things in nature as well. So be, be, don't be afraid to talk about costs. Something else we also really want to emphasize is that Crohn's and irritable bowel disease can present themselves in so many different ways with so many symptoms. And it's really hard sometimes to get a diagnosis. That's not an uncommon story that happens with patients. There are often times where you have to keep going from gastroenterologist to another provider and get those answers that you might not find on the first try. So we want to emphasize that you have rights as a patient. And if you yourself or a loved one is going through um, these experiences, you have a right for your symptoms to be taken seriously. You have a right to complete colonoscopies and procedures on your own terms. And you have a right to switch providers wherever you see fit. We also know that from stories with people with Crohn's and irritable bowel disease that there's a lot of mental trauma 
that can be associated with the physical trauma that comes because flare-ups happen and they can come unexpectedly. They can come with varying severity as well. And it can be a very difficult experience for patients to go through. Some of the common mental health associations include PTSD, depression, and anxiety. So we wanna also highlight a couple of resources. One um, that was created by the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, which is also for all Canadians, um, is eMentalHealth.ca. It's a it shows it's a database for all these programs across Canada for Canadians of all ages, so you can find something suitable for you. Stella's Place is a charitable organization where you can receive one-on-one -on -one counseling through phone or video chats. And Big White Wall is by the government of Ontario, and it's an anonymous forum. So you can post and there's a like-minded community and it's also very much regulated. And one that's specific for people with chronic bowel illness is the Jennifer Jaff Caroline for patients. So it's a patient advocate, Caroline, if you ever need to speak to someone or a loved one needs to speak to someone, the number is there as well as the email. So Dia, you, um, if you go back one, one of the things is always trying to sort out what those symptoms are, is it, you know, we always bring up, is this organics or something really wrong? Are there psychological factors and, uh, and, and, and combinations of both? So going back to Mary's story is that, uh, you know, weight, weight loss, blood in the stools um, are, are, are some warning signs and uh, uh, feeling tired, fatigued, uh, having alternate diarrhea, constipation are to be quite common problems too as well. And sorting out which is that are that are fixable with, um, you know, so let's say the biologics that you're talking about versus work or, or going to more mindfulness and things of that nature and changing your diet and things of that nature. So it's important to see the right people in the field about this. So when Mary became sick, had symptoms is that uh, I directed her to a gastroenterologist who started off with colonoscopy and her diagnosis was made. Sometimes it can be challenging, sometimes it cannot be. But at some point in time, you have to trust the team around you. And, um, and uh, I, you know, when I go to the dentist, um, I, I ask the dentist questions, but I rely on, on that person's judgment. If I go see the gastroenterologist and the, the, that person is making sense to me, I tend to, to believe that. Um, I can tell you a lot about the heart and prevention, but uh, I'm a lousy gastroenterologist, so uh, I would be the wrong person to, to to make that diagnosis. But be careful is that, you know, people want to sell you powder potions and things of that nature as well. So use the right people at the right time. And your family doctor is a great resource if you happen to have one. Um, so uh, thank you for sharing that. And going along the lines of advocacy, we'll just be touching on some resources that are available online to support individuals with Crohn's disease. So the first one that we wanted to talk about was the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of Canada, which provides scientific information, webinars, and reports about living with Crohn's disease or colitis. So they have region-specific contacts to access support, and they also promote events related to IBD, one of which is called the Now is Not the Time campaign. So as we discussed before, biosimilar drugs are similar but not identical to biologic drugs. So this campaign is advocating for patients who are on successful treatment regimens and who may be forced to change to biosimilar medications as a result of the non-medical policies that the Quebec and Ontario government have proposed. Um, and while we said that biosimilars can be very beneficial for many patients, especially when we're considering like cost-saving purposes. Uh, right now, we know that our healthcare system is quite burdened by COVID-19. So this campaign is, is advocating for the government to reevaluate when we want to implement those policies so that for individuals who are switching to medications, they'll be able to get the healthcare they need um, in order to kind of kind of transfer to that new medication nicely, as we know that more than one in two people with IBD often experience uh, negative changes to their health after switching to a medication. Um, and so to support that campaign, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation has created a subpage on their website. I've provided the link over here um, just to send a letter to the provincial government to help them realize that they should evaluate these policies so that we implement them at a time that's best for everyone involved. 
And I also wanted to mention the Betsy Peer Support Initiative. And this is an online mentoring and support program that connects individuals with people who have lived with or, live, or are caring for someone with uh, Crohn's or colitis. So all participants who apply should be 18 or over and signups can be done on the foundations page. So and I think really we have to approach this with um, good things um, and, and get sometimes the emotion out of this. So a lot of people, um, you know, uh, have very uh, uh, emotional issues. So I'm, I'm really quite impressed with the science right now. I think you mentioned we're burdened with COVID and, uh, you know, is that we still have some people that are very resistant to, uh, I've never taken a vaccine in my life. I never will take a vaccine. I don't need to. And that's certainly one approach. Uh, but then there's many of us who feel that uh, the vaccines provided 90% uh, protection against death or hospitalization. Things like pertussis, whooping cough, tetanus, uh, polio have been eradicated as much as smallpox or, or you know, greatly treated. So we have to always keep our minds open. And uh, when I think I know everything, I know nothing and I'm, I'm learning all the time. So please keep an open mind at this point in time. Um, uh, the pharmaceutical industry develops good products. Your physicians will decide with you uh, what is best for you and, and cost has to be a factor into this. Uh, so uh, we can, we, we have, you know, when I started practice, we didn't have biologic. This is a brand new area. It's, it's, it's changed medicine dramatically. And, uh, and uh, development in this area. Go ahead, Hannah. Of course. Yeah, and as always, we always say, um, always talk to your family doctor and your other specialists if you ever have questions when it comes to medications. They are the experts, and so just always feel to discuss with them your concerns. So the next one that we wanted to talk about was the Canadian Digestive Health Foundation, and they cover an array of digestive conditions that I've listed on the bottom left here, including Crohn's disease. So they have really interesting infographics like the one that's on the right here that talk about statistics, resources, information to advocate for and support individuals with these conditions. And finally, the gastrointestinal. If you just go back one slide there, you can see on the bottom is that you can see different conditions from diverticular disease to GI reflux to irritable bowel syndrome to pancreatic insufficiency to diabetic gastroparesis. You know, this is a very specialized area, and uh, you and you have good, 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 good people to help make the right diagnosis at the right point in time. Um, so, uh, um, so use all the resources available to you, but listen very carefully and uh, and um, move forward with your with, with uh, how your bowels work. Uh, I find myself is that the changing your diet can make such a big difference uh, from you know fiber content, avoiding processed foods. Um, uh, people are very much into microbiotics at this point in time. That area is not well science led right now, but we're learning. So we're gonna, we have lots to learn right now. So you can certainly do an experiment on yourself, but also learn and adapt to, to changing science because this has changed tremendously. Of course. And all these resources that we mentioned today, they go into a lot of the research that is being, being conducted right now. And they also convey those results in a way that's understandable for anyone. So feel free to look at these resources if you want to learn more about Crohn's disease and other um, gastrointestinal conditions. So the final uh, resource that we want to talk about was the Gastrointestinal Society, which is committed to improving the lives of people with gastrointestinal and liver conditions. Uh, advocating for research and appropriate patient access to healthcare and promoting gastrointestinal health. So some of the resources that can be found on this site include infographics, videos, uh, information about biosimilars and biologic coverage for IBD. So providing information about territorial and federal drug plan coverage across Canada for IBD patients. We also have resources on health and nutrition, therapeutic drug monitoring, medical marijuana and IBD, um, and we also have some support resources called Bad Gut Stories and Living with IBD, tips from support groups. And I just want to highlight with Bad Gut Stories, it's um, essentially a group of free public forums that cover various digestive topics for patients, caregivers, healthcare professionals, and other interested individuals. So these forums include people who are sharing their personal struggles, 
and successes with digestive diseases and disorders and what's worked for them. And it also includes lectures given by well-recognized experts as well as a Q&A session as well. So feel free to look at any of these resources for more information. So now we'll talk a little bit about IBS versus IBT and what's similar or what's different between them. So IBS as a refresher stands for irritable bowel syndrome and IBD means inflammatory bowel disease. But as you can see, one key difference right off the bat between these two illnesses is that IBD is classified as a disease, whereas IBS is classified as a syndrome, which is, a, which is defined as a group of symptoms. However, these two illnesses are also similar in the fact that they both affect the gastrointestinal tract and they can cause abdominal pain as well as changes in the bowel movements. So now I'm going to highlight some important differences between these two illnesses. So IBS is known as a functional GI disorder that causes recurrent abdominal pain and changes in bowel movements and symptoms may include bloating, constipation, diarrhea, or mixed diarrhea with constipation. On the other hand, um, chronic inflammatory diseases involving the GI tract, such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, fall under the IBD category. And in IBD, the symptoms can be different for, for everyone, depending on the type of IBD and where the inflammation in the GI tract is located. In addition to this, patients with IBS have symptoms without damage to the GI tract, and IBS does not cause inflammation. So this means that there's rarely any um, hospitalization or surgery needed. So as a result, there's usually no sign of disease or abnormality during an exam of the colon in a patient with IBS. On the other hand, compared to this, in IBD, immune cells cause destructive inflammation and ulceration in the lining of the intestines, and the GI tract is damaged. So this leads to permanent harm to the intestines. So because of this, IBD can be seen during diagnostic imaging. And lastly, IBS patients don't have an increased risk of colon cancer. Um, but IBD patients do have an increased risk of colon cancer. So you can see that patients that have IBD have a more severe diagnosis and they're in worse health than those that have IBS. So that, those are the key differences between those two illnesses. Perfect. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about how you can become an advocate. So we had we have some examples uh, before, but I kind of want to get into some specific ones where uh, you can do right now or in the in the near future. So one of the programs started by the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of Canada is called the Go Here uh, Washroom Access Program, and what it is basically uh, is they create an app and an, a desktop application as well, um, where it marks locations uh, from public settings. Um, so local businesses, as well as uh, municipal washrooms, uh, where public washroom access um, is available. So you can use this app to find uh, your nearest uh, public washroom that you can use uh, if you need to ha have an urgent bowel movement. And so what you can do as an advocate is to demand access, uh, more access to public washrooms. So if you uh, own a local business, you can join the Go Here Washroom Access Program and you can just go on the Crohn's and Colitis website and they have a link to that program. And as well, you can encourage your local businesses to join this program. And by joining this program, they will be able to put on the location of their washrooms on their app. So people with uh, Crohn's and colitis uh, would have less anxiety about having uh, or trying to find a washroom if they need to have an urgent bowel movement. And most uh, patients with Crohn's disease will have to make up to 20 plus uh, urgent uh, washroom trips uh, in a flare up. So this can really help to decrease the anxiety around trying to find a washroom um, in a public setting as well. And the second specific uh, way you can become an advocate is to take part in the Gutsy Walk. So this is again made, uh, it's a program by the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of Canada. It's an annual fu fundraiser across Canada uh, to help raise awareness and also to fundraise money for IBD research and to help with uh, improving patient programs and creating new patient programs. So this gutsy walk typically happens in June. So next one will be in June 2022. Uh, but you can sign up right now in September um, to take part in this walk um, later on in next summer.
And lastly, I just want to highlight uh, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation uh, website. So this is in the US, um, but this, is, uh, this link leads to a very good page um, where they have a lot of patient stories and also stories from healthcare providers and family members around um, the experience living with Crohn's and colitis um, or being an advocate for someone living with Crohn's and colitis. So if you wanna learn more, if you wanna read some personal stories and patient stories, uh, you can click on this link um, or you can search up Crohn's and colitis foundation.org um, and you can read these stories uh, if you're interested. So thank you so much for coming to our uh, webinar tonight and learning more about Crohn's of us. I just wanna highlight the amazing team that I was able to make this webinar possible. Um, I wanna give a shout out to Dia and Hannah who have, I've been working with for a very long time now with the Mindfulness Motivation and Moving Group. Um, and they're awesome and you can see their pictures here and they've also joined me here tonight. And so thank you to Dia and Hannah and also to the rest of our amazing team. We have Aman, Kushi, Risha, and as well, we have Samira, Tushar, and Yo Yoon. And this webinar wouldn't be possible without their help. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, so that concludes our webinar for tonight. And if you want to contact us, you can always email us at drkernu232 at gmail.com. You can visit Dr. Kernu's YouTube channel for our webinars tonight and also for some short videos. And you can also visit Dr. Kernu's website at drkernu.com. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. I want to thank uh, the team for putting this on. Uh, Mary was a very special person to a lot of us. Um, and she wanted us to uh, bring this on uh, and let people know about uh, Crohn's disease. And uh, she tells us she is the first patient with Crohn's disease that, that chose to end the, her life on her terms. She suffered a lot, but she also gave tremendous support. Um, and it reminds me is that uh, I heard that there's two things in life for certain, we have to pay taxes and we'll all pass away at some point in time. Um, and uh, Mary taught us how to live life to its fullest and also um, how to make uh, her leaving this world to a new world uh, a better experience. It's interesting at the same time uh, I've seen a lot of people that were suffering uh, with end stage of from congestive heart failure, from end stage renal disease, uh, from, from different cancers. And, uh, and what this pandemic has taught me and others is that uh, we can get closer together and uh, we can surround ourselves with the people that are most important to us. Um, Mary, uh, you're a wonderful lady. And uh, I will always remember you and uh, we, your, your messages will live on. One of the messages she taught me too, as well as the, 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 the beauty of movement. And uh, there's this uh, place I haven't visited to right now. It's in uh, around Sherman street. It's a place that uh, lets you, uh, it's run by a church and it's a, it's, a, it's a nonprofit organization that will teach you to fix a bike, ride a bike, repair a bike. And uh, I promise Mary, I will go there and, and, and help that group to a different place. We will support the Crohn's Foundation and uh, we'll support people in any way we possibly can. Um, uh, these young people who give these presentations uh, are, are do the research, do the work, and uh, uh, they make us all better. So thank you all for your, for your hard work. And uh, I really say this with all sincerity is Jerry and, and, and his team with uh, Hannah and, and uh, Dia, Dia, you always have that joke of the week uh, and others as well. Uh, I really look forward to that. I zoom in, I zoom out. Um, and uh, and I, my favorite time is that I want, I want to do this group one day when I'm um, uh, kayaking on, uh, on some river and join you uh, virtually. I haven't done that yet. I will try to do that one day. Um, and uh, all the others in the group from Kushi and others who thank you so much for your for sharing all this information and you all will do ter terrifically well. Please join us for uh, the, the mindfulness and meditation movement group. Um, it takes place on uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, you're always welcome. Or if you don't want to use Zoom, uh, we will reach out to you and call you um, on weekends or evenings to give you support and guidance and things of nature. You provided me with so much guidance. I never thought it, you know, in my early 60s, I would need this much guidance, but I've got so much support and thank you. 
Um, any questions out there, Stuart, uh, on, uh, on, on either on YouTube or on, on uh, now Zoom? Um, any comments from anybody? Um, yeah, we do have one comment uh, suggesting it might be a good idea to mention ulcerative colitis sufferers under IBD. Uh, did you have any insights that you wanted to add on uh, ulcerative yeah. colitis? So ulcerative colitis is another infl inflammatory bowel disease. It's a cousin of uh, Crohn's disease. It usually involves a more distal part of your bowel, and it's usually more of a continuous type of process. Um, absolutely. Um, where Crohn's can have more skip lesions along the way. But there's other problems too as well. If you've had diabetes for many years, it can affect the bowel and it can affect uh, how one looks at it. Certain infections can cause a problem too as well. So that's why you need the work of uh, people who are experts on this. I am no expert when it comes to inflammatory bowel disease and I'm in awe of all the developments that take place. I know a few principles, but not enough to manage this condition. Um, What's happened in healthcare over time is that, uh, you know, uh, I think the hardest job in the world is to find a good family doctor who knows what they know and how to direct the right place. Place. I always just say I know a lot about very little in my field, and uh, I work very hard to keep up to date, and it's impossible to. So, one cannot expect any physician to be totally knowledgeable about everything. And, uh, uh, but um, uh, physicians really. Um, uh, know a lot about uh, different areas and, and we'll, we'll share that with you but you also need as a um, as a patient or client is that you need to take matters into your own hands so we gave you some ways to be an advocate for yourself but also be an advocate in health and so things like movement weight proper diet are so important we're learning the roles of probiotics at this point in time and there's lots of opinion not enough science just yet but you know, there's so much to learn and uh, I, I, I learn so much all the time. So explore diets, explore mindfulness, explore uh, when you have, as, uh, as I, if you have an inflammatory disease that penetrates the bowels and damages the bowels, you may need to use biologics to, to stop that progression. Um, and uh, and uh, learning to use your mind to help you as well is important too as well. So uh, wonderful time, wonderful presentation. Um, Stuart, I'll give you the last word. Well, wonderfully well said, Dr. Kurnu. I don't really have too much more to add on top of that other than uh, just to reiterate what the many volunteers have mentioned today is that if you're experiencing any of the symptoms that we discussed today, diarrhea, fever, uh, frequent cramps, abdominal pains, things of that nature, uh, it's certainly a good idea to reach out to your family physician who may be able to refer you to your gastroenterologist who can do x-rays, blood tests, and stool tests. Uh, to, to confirm your diagnosis for you and come up with a treatment plan that works for you. And as Dr. Kernu and the team mentioned as well, being an advocate not only for others, but also yourself um, by exploring diet, exercise, lifestyle. And um, one that often falls under the radar is having good relationships and having good connections as well. So if you are interested in um, joining our mindfulness uh, meditation and moving club, please feel free to send us an email at drkernu232 at gmail.com. We'll be able to uh, schedule you in for uh, upcoming weeks where you'll be able to uh, join some of these sessions and see if they work for you. Um, with that, I would just like to say thank you everyone who joined us this week and who always join us every single week. And uh, we look forward to giving you another webinar next week as well. Now, remind people is that not everybody needs to see a specialist. That's why you have a family doctor who can really sort, sort things out. And what, what, what thing about your family doctor they understand the totality of, of you as a person. And uh, so where a specialist will gear in on certain parts of your health, your, your family doctor is, is your quarterback and something you need to reach out for. Also, you don't have to be a patient of, uh, of myself to join any of our groups. We love more the merrier. And uh, we just want to make people a little bit healthier and uh, feel a little bit better about themselves. So uh, Jerry and your team, anybody else, any, any final thoughts at all? Yeah, I just want to say thank you all for coming out tonight. And thank you, Dr. Trini, for providing some great insights for everyone. Um, and again, I just want to uh, thank Mary for all that she contributed to us in our group. And also, we hope that for this webinar, you'll be able to learn more about Crohn's and also maybe a little bit about colitis and how to be an advocate and also um, to kind of spread awareness about this disease. So we hope um, our webinar was able to do that for you. And I don't know if Hannah or Dio or any other, any other volunteers have any other things to say.
You said it all. We just hope we did Mary justice. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks Mary for everything you've done and uh, your spirit lives on in all of us and uh, good night everybody.